Okay, I really, I recorded some like intro thing and then it wouldn't let me put it on. So I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, I'm going to have to put my phone up in the little holder, but I've got my yarn. I've got my hook. Now, I'll tell you more about it once I get this up here because I really don't want to look at my face. I want you to see the crochet. Um, that's the wrong direction. Sorry, here we go. I really thought it was going to let me put that little video and then I could do this without you guys watching. Okay, switch the camera. That's too bright. Is it on? Okay, make sure this thing is tight because I don't want it to fall down. That doesn't look right. What's going on here? Sorry, my live video sucks at the beginning. So, if you can see that, we're going to make sure that the camera doesn't fall down. And I'm pretty sure you can hear me. Maybe you saw me go on my Instagram and go, hey, come check me out, yay! And you're waiting and you're ready and excited. And I'm going to have my computer open. You can see here my computer is open because I want to be able to respond. I wanted to see, I'm not even sure if that's going to work. Why does the camera look so weird? Okay, you know what? We're going to go with it. Uh, I haven't done a live on my phone, I guess. Maybe that's the problem. I think I usually do my computer for the lives, and that's why it would have asked me to upload a video. I didn't know it changed so much for... Anywho, okay. Sorry that my beginning is so boring. I was trying to tell you in the pre-recorded thing that it wouldn't let me see. Um, I've got my 8mm hook and some chunky yarn. That is not my normal go-to, but... I have learned that on the videos, you guys can see the stitches a little easier when the yarn is bigger, right? So let me see, oops, we're gonna do one more thing to set up here. So you could buy this pattern if you wanted to, but I don't have it updated right now. The pattern that's on there, it's called Goldilocks. And right now it is just sort of um, a square. It's like a 40 window square and you could make the square and it'd be fine and all good. But I have this update thing that I'm working on that I now think that we can do together. Oh no, I don't want to hear it. No, hush. Oh goodness. I'm trying to watch me at the same time. I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> oh goodness, guys. Don't hate me. I don't know what I'm doing, but I know how to crochet and that's why you're here, right? So. We are going to do interlocking crochet. I asked on my Facebook group and the majority of the people definitely said, we want to see more interlocking crochet. So I said, okay. And like I think I was saying, the Goldilocks pattern hasn't been updated to have this smaller repeat, but because I do have it in my files and I can do it with you here, and then I'll update the pattern with the pretty picture later in a, in a couple days, probably. I'm pretty slow at it sometimes. Um, so I didn't print the first page because I don't need it. If you printed off the pattern, you would get um, a page that has a picture and then it has a bunch of words. And then you would get these ones. The pattern underneath here, that says not actually part of what I was doing. I feel flustered that it didn't give me time. I had like a five minute clip that it was gonna show you. And then I could get this up and get these papers and then I'd be ready for the live. So that was the plan, sorry guys. Um, if you've done interlocking crochet before, I don't think this will be too hard. If you are completely brand new, I'm hoping to go slow enough that you'll be able to get it this time. I do have other tutorials. Some of them were taped a really long time ago and I've noticed that they kind of suck. Just to be honest, some of my videos, a little bit, they were just so old and I was new to it all. So I'm hoping this will be better. First thing you should always do, read the key. Whether you're new to it or not new to it, the key is going to tell you stuff right? The key on here, because I didn't print the first page, the first page tells you that if you're using worsted weight yarn, it would take this much yarn and this much hook and blah, blah, blah. All of my patterns, you can use a different hook and yarn. These ones, one isn't actually way thicker than the other. This was a mill end. Maybe I should start from the other end because it's much thicker. There we go. Mill ends, have you heard that term before? It really means that this is something's wrong with it and they couldn't sell it at full price, so I didn't pay as much. There we go. That's better. So as long as the two yarns are the same weight and your hook is appropriate for the hook or for the yarn weight, you can use 
any weight yarn you want to use. The technique does not change. However, using a bigger hook and the bigger yarn for the video should allow you to see the stitches better. That's why I chose it today. This Goldilux pattern is going to be um, very skinny and tall. And you can repeat the width. So you can make it as wide as you want. And the tallness, because I've written out the full pattern, you can actually stop at any time you want and finish it off. I have written the words there. Um, if we read the beginning, it would tell you again. You could just skip to the end. So hopefully today we'll crochet together and it will have to stop at whatever point. And then um, if you're watching this later, you can still make it as big as you want. We're going to call this dark color the main color and this light color the accent color. You have to look at the chart for every single pattern because sometimes they change. But usually when I'm doing my stuff, the dark color in my brain is going to be the main color. It's like if I had the paper in front of me and I was drawing with a pencil, the dark color is really what I've drawn. So it'll be the unicorn or the letter, right? Like that's kind of usually how it works. I'm getting very distracted by seeing my video on my computer. Uh, oh, I was going to put the link. Okay. I don't know. YouTube Live. Check it out. I don't know if there's a link. Oh, yeah. Maybe that one. Okay. So that's what I was going to do in that video. And then I just got to finish that because otherwise it's on my to-do list and I'll be feeling distracted. So, I'm not sure if you had enough time to get your yarn and crochet with me, but I'm going to start and I'm going to go as slow as I can. If you have questions, I'm going to try to keep an eye on here so that I can see it. Um, hopefully, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're first going to start with our main color. And if you read this, it says usually dark. That usually means that sometimes it changes, okay? You always have to look. For this pattern, the foundation row is written very strange. 10 plus 4 main color stitches or 10 plus 3 accent color stitches. So on your foundation, that's how many you're going to count. And when you're doing the pattern here, these little asterisks tell you the inner. So even number rows are always main color. Odd number is accent color. If you counted here, 7, 1, and 2, we can count them to get 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's the 10 part. And then this is a main color row. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4 stitches. Front one and a front one. And then the end stitch at the end and the chain 3. So that's how you know that it matches. That's really what I'm trying to teach you is that it matches, okay? And I like to start with the window foundation. But you can also chain and then go back and make all those windows. Today, let's start with the chain because I want this to be really easy for you guys. Um, actually, slip knots are something that apparently people don't know how to do. So this is what I do is I hold my yarn and I take it and I give it a little twist. And then I pull through. Slip knot made. And if you are super, super new, maybe you don't know how to chain, but I think most of you know you just pull the yarn through and that's a chain. And we're going to count them. If we got our pattern here, it says you can chain repeats of 20. So depending on how wide you want to make it, I'm just going to do the base of 20. And then you add nine more. So I count one. Well, I'm counting the back bumps now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So if you were making a bigger thing, you would need to keep going. Oh, I thought this was going to work, but guess what? <laughs> I've pulled the yarn from the wrong end. Do you think it's going to work? Welcome to my live video where anything can happen and I'm crazy. I'll just pull it through. And, all right, I guess we're taking from the outside edge of both skeins. Whatever, that's okay. So, we did chain 20 
plus now we need nine more chains. So you could do 20 or you could do 40 or 60, however you want to do. Once you finish that, then you add nine more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then it says DC, which is a double crochet, and this is US terminology, which some people don't even know there's a difference. Mine is US terminology because I'm Canadian and Canadians just do US everything, don't you know? It says do a double crochet in the sixth chain from your hook. So I'm going to count these bumps. One, two, three, four, five. Here's number six. Yarn over, insert it, grab a loop, then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. That's your first window. This, the corners aren't very straight on this one. And between every double crochet, there's a chain. Now down here, you can see this is the next bump. The back bumps are easier to count and it keeps the bottom looking nice, so that's why I like to do them. We're going to skip this back bump and we're going to go into the next one. We're doing another double crochet. So we yarn over, skip that one, go into this one. Double crochet. Make sure you do a chain space. Yarn over, skip one bump, go into the next bump. It feels weird using this hook. It is ginormous. The project that I've been working on, I'm using a three and a half millimeter hook and like really small yarn. So this is way bigger than I'm used to. Yarn over, skip one, go into the next one. Where is the link to the pattern? That's a great question. If you wanted to get the pattern, you could. However, what we're doing today is not updated on there yet. So I'll still put it in, but it's actually, um, this hasn't been published, if that makes sense, because I'm cool like that. Here is your link. Ta -da! So this is the one I'm going to be doing. However, it will be updated. So if you're watching this later, that link will actually be handy. So we're going to just keep going. Chain, double crochet. Make sure you're skipping one and you're double crocheting in here. This is creating like a, a trellis, a window foundation. You can see it's very gappy. And I don't think this part is super hard. I think some people might have been intimidated or confused because I usually like the foundationless, no, chainless, chainless foundation row, which is just, it's just something extra, right? You think you're coming to learn something new and then more things get thrown at you that are feeling weird and it's daunting. So that's why today I think it's easier for a lot of people to just start with chaining and doing these double crochets all the way back. Hello, Rosalyn. Cynthia and Rosalyn are my commenters. You guys are great. You're my new besties. And if you are wanting to make this bigger later, you're going to have to either take your thing apart or sew some squares together because you can't just add on this isn't this once we make this it'll be like this big right so if you want to make it bigger now's your chance this is where you could actually add on that chainless foundation row you could just keep going and make some more windows that's another handy thing to know if you're doing that chainless foundation if you've miscounted it's handy so this is how it says create 10 windows plus three so we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two. Oh, I might have a typo in here already. Twenty plus nine, six in train. Uh oh. See, this is why I didn't publish it yet. Although I did think I was ready for the video. One, two, three. Ten plus three. Hmm. Well. Now I better double check. Chain three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two,
10, 11, 12. That doesn't seem right, guys. 10 plus 3 accent. 10 plus 3 windows, 20 plus 9. So I am going to have to check that. That's, that's why it's not published yet. So in order to double check it, what I've been counting is the stitches here. If I was to do row 4, um, I would have chain 3, I'd have 1 in the back, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in the back, 1 in the front, 2 in the back, 1 in the back, and then an end stitch. So I actually do need to add one more. So I'll have to change this. I think it should have been 10 plus 4, and I'm not sure why I put 10 plus 3, and then down here is wrong as well. But that's okay. Here's what we do to add another one. We chain. Now we're not going to do a double, we're going to do a triple. And we're going to go into this bottom here. And you just chain one. That gets you like the bottom chain. But because this loop is in the way, I go under both of them to keep it flat. So that counts as the missing chain. And then you chain again. Oops, sorry yarn, come here. To get you the double crochet. So now we've created another window. You love watching me even when I make all these crazy mistakes. I feel a little embarrassed, to be honest. Here I am trying to teach you and I've got the wrong count. I should have double checked it, but I, I thought I had double checked it. But I guess I learned, you know, my last um, coupon code that I sent out in my emails, I tr double checked that one too, and I really think I should have tripled. That's what I'm learning. I better triple check everything because I'm losing my brain. I think this is correct, but as you can see, it is possible to add windows. So if the count is wrong, we're not going to be lost. So it's going to be okay. The next step that we need to do is create the foundation row with the accent color because we're using two colors and they're just woven in between each other. Now, if I trust my pattern, it says chain repeats of 20 plus 7. Now you could technically make the windows, um, the foundation or the chainless foundation again, where you're making squares. However, in order to get these locked into each other, it's quite difficult to make the windows around it. So I do prefer chaining for this part. And we are going to chain. We're going to start with 20, of course. That part I know is right, but I think it actually should say 9. I'm not sure. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So if you lined it all up, what you're doing is creating one chain for a window and then one chain that goes right on that bar. So window bar, window bar, window bar. And then you have to chain a couple extra because you need to make your first corner. So we're going to go seven. I'm going to try and trust my pattern. Five, six, seven. And let's see what it would put me in here. Maybe I counted this wrong. It's possible. So if you had counted here, so the first one here goes in the hole, the first chain, and then the next chain would be on here. So this, this foundation row is inside the gray. So there will always be a dark gray on the edge and a dark gray on the edge and then a dark gray on the bottom edge and once you get to the top it will be the same. It does help you figure it out when I make all these mistakes. <laughs> that's good because uh, that's pretty much how I do life. Make mistakes, figure it out, then you're better off, right? So if you counted all your chain spaces you could make sure that you're lined up here. So I'm going to have one in the window, one on the pole, one in the window, one on the pole. Can't really see my window there, but there is one in the window, pole, 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 window, pole. So this is the last window, which means that count is wrong because that's not enough chains. So I will definitely fix that before I publish the pattern, obviously. So this is the chain here that belongs in this window hole, 
which means now we have to do chain two for our double crochet, chain one for the gap that would be on the top, and then make a double crochet down here. So we're going to skip this chain because it's for the pole. The next one here is right here. That's where we're going to enter. You can put a stitch marker or something there. And what you need to have over here is one, two, three, four, and then I do five, six. That is double crochet in the sixth chain from your hook, right? So that's why this isn't enough. One, two, three, four. Well, this would be five. I guess it's only one off. That's so weird. I don't know what's going on, guys. Welcome to my live where Ashley shows just how incompetent she is. That's how I feel right now. One, two, three, four, five. So this chain, this is the one we want to go into anyways. Then there's one that's going to be skipped for the pole, one that counts as the bottom of the hole. If you do two, one, two, as the double crochet, then this one is for your chain space at the top of the window, and that makes the next one is a double crochet into this stitch here. However, before we get there, we need to line these up properly. So I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit more. I'm going to put a stitch marker in it because the count is really the most confusing part. So it really sucks that that's where I messed up today. But when you're looking at this little picture, I don't know if you can see the picture. It depends how clear the video is. I do have this in all my patterns, just as a reminder of how things are going. If you're left-handed, you're going to have this all flipped, right? But I'm right-handed, so I can only crochet right-handed. We want this to be laying so that the working tail, the one that's ready and waiting for us, is just here. On the This is my right hand, so this is on the left. And this here, if we lay it on top, above, like so, this tail needs to come through the window so that it's laying on top of it like this instead. Then, that one that we have the stitch marker in, this is going through the first window. The next window here is where this one needs to line up. So when we do this double crochet, oh my yarn's being a bit weird up here too. Funny yarn, funny pattern, crazy Ashley. The double crochet, yarn over, but we need to go through the window. So that's the scary part, right? It's weird. I don't think I've done this in any other kind of pattern. It was new to me too when we started interlocking crochet. And we want to go into this stitch here. That's why I put the stitch marker. But we're going to bring it to the back so that we don't get things tangled and twisty. Do our yarn over, finish your double crochet like normal, and chain one because you always have a chain one between all your double crochets. That is written in the key. It says a double crochet, do your yarn over. But if you look here, F and B, those stitches mean do a double crochet either behind or in front and chain one. So that's why when you read the pattern, it's all these numbers, it's very condensed because you need to know, is it going to be in front or behind? And you have to remember, it always also includes, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. It always includes that chain one space as well. And then people often get this part twisted and then they confuse themselves. So if you lay it nice and straight, you will see that the yellow is going on top, the gray is on the bottom, then the yellow. And then this yellow is all going to be behind. We're going to pick everything up from behind. I'm just going to grab a sip of water. <clears throat> so to connect our two foundation rows, we're going to go through every single window. We're going to chain between all of these double crochets and we're going to go into every second chain space here. Right, so this is the one we just used. The next chain space is me skipped because of that post. So this one here will be our next one. Yarn over, go through the window, find your chain, and then bring it to the back of your work so that nothing gets twisted. And do your double crochet that way. Chain one. 
yarn over, go through the next window. This is the chain we just used, so we skip one and we go into this one. And we're going to bring it to the back. Finish our double crochet. Chain one, yarn over, go in, skip one. We're going into this one. Bring it to the back. So you can see that these stitches are not actually worked like gray is only into gray and yellow is only into yellow. They just happen to be woven together. That's how we're connecting them, right? Remember chain one between each, yarn over, go through the window, find your next stitch. Bring it back over, finish your double crochet. Chain one, My brain is still trying to figure out the math of how come I got that wrong. It's really bothering me. I thought I had my math figured out. I have all sorts of formulas all over the place. And um, this, well, that string is being stinky. Oh well. Anyway, I was hoping that this live video would be a good one that you guys could watch over and over, but who's going to want to watch this if they don't know the count at the beginning? I think I can pin. I'll have to pin it when I figure out the proper count, which I could just count what I just did here. It should say... Well, I don't know if I can pin it until after I'm done the live. Yeah. Okay. Focus on one thing at a time. It's okay. We'll fix it. It's going to be okay. Chain one. Yarn over. Go through the window. Find it. Bring it to the back. Chain one. This is our final window. Skipping that one, that leaves us one, so we know we got our count right. That is the foundations. So now it's all twisted and people go, oh, I don't know what direction I'm going. Should it be here? Should it be there? Right? That's the scary part as well. So what you're going to do is get your two working yarns, the loops. We're going to put them up here facing this direction and just smooth everything out, okay? It's going to be gray on the outside, gray on the bottom, gray on the outside again. The yellow is going behind the gray on both sides. All of the stitches are behind the gray. So really, if you were to draw this on a piece of paper, you would have a gray box and a yellow line and a yellow line on top. That's what we can see. If you were looking at the chart, oh, I didn't think to do chart teaching right now. I think you guys wanted to learn the stitches, so I didn't bother printing the chart. But that's what the bottom of the chart looks like. Okay, so the tails are over here, and things are straight. We see all these straight lines. This is the right side of your work. You could put a marker on if you like. Actually, I think when I first started, I might have even pinned these together to keep them flat because I felt like they were flapping. So this is the right side. In order to continue, we have to turn our work. This is the wrong side. You can see all these lines that are going into each other. It's no longer straight. Other designers start with different foundations, but all of mine start with these lines the way they are. So you know this is the wrong side, but the still on the very bottom is gray and on the edges is gray. That's your main color. It's bigger. That layer of mesh is bigger than the yellow. Okay. You can put your stitch marker in the yellow loop. If you pull on your yarn, it'll undo, right? That's what the stitch marker is for, is just to keep the live loop waiting. And we're going to go back to our main color now. We're just using one color at a time. 
We don't have to have bobbins. We don't have to cut our yarn. We just keep it live and waiting. This is the next page. We're on page four of six, right? <laughs> um, I think the formatting might be different on your one, but it says now we're looking at wrong side and the accent color needs to go to the back. <coughs> so this is our accent color, the yellow. This tail and working loop needs to be held towards the back, a, a means away from you. We already discussed the right side and the wrong side. This is the wrong side, but it's the side that's currently facing us. So we're going to put this towards the back, the side that's not facing us. It's just going away from us. And we're going to start with a chain three. One, two, three. Some people use two chains as a double crochet, and some people use three chains as a double crochet. This is counting two chains as a double crochet, and the third chain is my space that goes between the double crochets. So if you need to, you can add another chain if you think it's too tight. Yarn over because we're going to be doing a double crochet. And the first stitch says 1B. We're going to go in the back. That means when we enter into this gray, we're still the top of the double crochet just like normal. That's where we're going to enter. But we need to know, is it going to be in front or behind this yellow? We're going to be doing it behind the yellow. So we yarn over and we go behind the yellow to find our stitch. Right at the top of the double crochet, that's where we're going. The double crochet goes into the other double crochet and then a chain one because that's how you finish the stitch, right? This tail and working loop is now locked in back there. If you got it on the wrong side, when you go to do the next row, it'll you'll find out and you'd have to either cut it or frog everything that you just did. So that's why it's important right now to make sure we know where they go. Then it has an asterisk. The asterisks are not included in all of my patterns. That is only for patterns that have repeating sections. Normally, you just keep crocheting. It's making a picture or something. But this design can be repeatable, so you can change how wide it's going to be, and that's what the asterisk tells you. We started with the base of 20 chains, the base of 10 windows or 20 chains, right? If you had done 40 or 60, when we do these asterisks, you would have to repeat when you get to the end of the asterisk. You just go to the beginning and do the asterisk part again. You don't start at chain 3, 1 back. You start at 7B. Annoying part, really, I think it's slightly annoying, is that if you're doing one repeat, the asterisk interrupts it. So we did one in the back, and then the next instruction says seven in the back. And normally when you're reading and you see one number and then the next number, you, you know you're going to switch. It's either front or it's back, and you switch. But because the asterisk has interrupted, we're not switching. These are still in the back. So when you go to count them, you'll actually have eight in the back here, right? So, yarn over. Now, we know that this is how it has to be, but for ease of crocheting, I'm just going to fold it down because we're going to go into all these stitches and we're going to have it behind this yellow layer. So we'll just get the yellow layer out of the way. Yarn over. One in the back. Chain one again. Right into that double crochet spot. We're doing a double crochet and a chain. That counts as one back stitch. We're going into the double crochet like a normal crocheting. It's just going into the front of the double crochet. It's just telling you whether it's going to be behind or in front the yellow part. So that's why there are a lot of techniques that are easier than interlocking crochet, I definitely think. However, once you understand all these crazy words and concepts, it's actually not so hard. We're just making a mesh. I do have a video on making a gauge swatch, which you could practice if you like. It was part one, <laughs> and I never got around to making any of the parts. So that's on my list too. So now this is where, if you're counting, you would look back and you'd say, oh, I've forgotten where I am. So first straighten everything out. This is the end stitch. Chain three, right on the end. Then it has one in the back and then seven more in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six. We need to do one more in the back. I'm only counting the double crochet, the bar 
the actual stitches. The chains aren't really being counted, which is also strange. Most patterns, if they have a stitch count, they'll include chains, double crochets, everything, right? So it can be confusing, but you just have to know what you're doing here. That's why once you get the hang of it, you can do them all. If you don't know how to do it, you don't have to do any of them, right? The next stitch is one in the front. It's the same thing. We're doing a double crochet, yarn over, but this time we want our double crochet to be in front of that yellow. So when we insert it, we want to bring everything to the front. Just pull everything right through the front, then do the rest of the stitch and chain one. So now you can see the double crochet. These ones were behind the yellow. This one is in front. And there's nothing looping around the yellow. He is free and clear. <clears throat> then it says two in the back. So we're going to go behind the yellow again. One double crochet and two double crochets. And that's where the asterisk interrupts us again. So if you had a longer piece, you would now say, oh, there's an asterisk. I'm going to add to the back again. It says, <clears throat> sorry, I'll just take some water again. If you had more, right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the back because the asterisk interrupted us here. So this is where you would start again. And right here, you'd add seven more in the back which would actually get you nine, right? You got these two plus seven. So it helps if you get these handy stitch markers, if you're doing repeats, to mark off your repeating sections because otherwise it's hard to know where exactly it started. There's nothing else telling you that the repeat starts in the middle, right? <coughs> so we are not doing any repeats. We're just gonna finish the outside of the asterisk. It says we can do one more in the back and our end stitch, that means we're going to put the double crochet right along the side. If you're really particular, you can find there's one chain here, the next chain here. You could go into that spot. I just go into the window. I don't, I don't think it makes too much difference. It does make a difference, but the amount of time it saves me just to go into the window, I'm not that uh, picky, which could be a problem. Some of you I know definitely are. So you'll, you'll find the second stitch is what you prefer. You can see our yellow. He got a little flappy again. He's wibbly wobbly. Straighten him out so that you don't confuse yourself, okay? Gray belongs on the bottom. Whether you're looking at the front or the back, gray belongs on the bottom. And gray is on all the sides. The yellow is smaller. He fits inside it. This layer of mesh and this layer of mesh they don't get stitched together. They only get woven together like so. Gray is into gray and yellow is into yellow. We can switch our stitch marker. That's gonna keep our live loop on the gray. And if you're reading the pattern, we are now doing row five. We're using the accent color. How do we know what row we're on? This is a common question. Well, first of all, let me find my stitch here. There we go. I'm just going to do my chain three because then I don't lose it again. Whether you're looking from the front, this is the wrong side or the, the right side to count. I always just count my windows, the gray windows. This is really row zero. And then the bottom of the yellow is row one. So this gray is zero. Then this chain space would be one. Then this gray here, is two, the space is three, this gray here we've just done row four, so now we need to do row five. If you're counting by windows, I go the first window is two, four. If I was doing another gray, it would be an even number row, but I'm not, so it's just five. And it says chain three in the back. Now you remember we had to deal with those the live loop at the when we were doing the gray so if you didn't get him in the right spot your chain three is not going to be in the back and that's where you're going to run into a problem as well if you got it in the back like this then you're good if you don't have it in the back you're going to have to undo that entire row of gray to open it up or you can cut it 
or you can leave it if you're not too concerned about it just leave it right sometimes we don't have to frog everything my yarn is a bit weird my throat is a bit weird everything today is a bit weird so we are going to we did our chain three in the back that counts as two for the double crochet and one for the chain space that goes between all the double crochets <coughs> Then we have one stitch in the front. That means we want to work. You can see this is right here. This is the stitch we're going to go into. And we're going to be in front of the gray. The gray has to stay behind. For this one, it's easy. There's not too much in the way anyways. Chain one between every double crochet. Then we have the asterisk. So this is where you could put your stitch marker if you were keeping track of your repeats. It says one in the back. Now, this window we just used in the front. So if you were counting the windows, you have to make sure you don't go through that window. He's already been used. The next window, if everything is lined up and straight, the next window that we go through to get into this stitch, but we have to go behind the gray one. So we're going in the window and we're pulling everything to the back before we do our double crochet. That's definitely the hard part about interlocking crochet. You guys, some of you are going, well, that's not too hard. And some of you are going, whoa, that's crazy. Okay, so that's what we're doing. This one's in the front. That yellow double crochet is behind the gray. He's not worked into the gray. The gray is still free and clear. He's just behind it. Then we have two more stitches in the front. This one has already been used. Each one only gets one stitch into one stitch. So you have to keep count chain between each double crochet two stitches in the front we're working in front of the gray and you have to make sure the windows are still lined up you don't want to add stitches and you don't want them to get crooked then the next one says one in the back again so this is the stitch we want to use but we want to do him behind the gray right so you can either pull that gray down and out of the way and find your stitch that way. I usually just put my hook in there and go into it like that, right? Then the next stitch is two in the front again. Oh, yarn. I was trying to pull from the center and it would have been easier, but instead I've got a mess. Oh, that's a long one. Okay. Let's see if I can tuck him in there better. Stop getting tangled, stinking yarn. Okay, then it has two in the back. So this stitch and this stitch are both going to be behind the gray. You can pull it down like that so you can find the stitch. Or you can just use your hook. Pull it behind, then you do your yarn over and pull it through. So if you had pulled this out, it's not in the gray at all. It just happens to be worked behind the gray. The next one as well, always going into the top of the double crochet. Those chain spaces are between each stitch. They give you space to move, but they don't get used. Then we have two more in the front. And that's the end of your asterisk. So if you were doing repeats, put your stitch marker, go back to the beginning of the asterisk section where it says 1B, 2 front, 1B, 2 front, right? We just have an end stitch in the back now. You can see this is pretty floppy. This is your final window. We've yarned over. I'm going to go in the final window. And you can find your second chain or you can just do the whole window. This is what I do. And you pull it all to the back before you do your yarn over and pull everything through to finish the double crochet. Now, if you're looking at this again, we've just finished row five. 
the gray is on the outside, the bottom, and the outside. This is the wrong side because those lines at the bottom are spiking into each other. We're getting ready to flip our work. This is now the right side. The bottom is still gray. The sides are still gray, except for this tail, but he doesn't count. It's still gray on the outsides, but the bottom lines is straight, straight, straight. You can sort of see these poking through because we can still see what we've done, but the general lines is gray, yellow, gray, straight. That's the right side. These poking lines, that's the wrong side. Two, four, we're gonna use gray next so we know it's six. We should switch this, otherwise knowing me and the kind of day I'm having, I'll yank on the yarn and undo it and then I'll be crying. So, we gotta pick up our live loop. First thing we want to know, besides knowing that we're working on the right side, you're looking here in this blue section, it says R-S-A-C-F. The right side is facing you. Accent color to front. So we're looking at the right side. These lines are straight on the bottom. And this accent color and tail and everything has to be brought to the front. We need to keep it towards us. We don't want it to get worked in sideways. We want it to be out of the way, but in the front. Our gray one here, we always start with chaining. One, two for the double crochet, and then one more for the space between double crochets. Our first stitch is in the front. The first stitch that we're gonna work into, this one already has been worked into. So this is the next one here. And it's in the front, which means that the yellow is gonna stay, this yellow has to stay behind. Oh, sorry about my yarn again. And chain one, because there's always a chain one to finish a front stitch or a back stitch. So these tails here are now locked in over here. When you go to use them again, they're on the right side. Now we're gonna continue. The asterisks, if it matters to you, you can mark them. Because I'm not doing repeats, I don't need to worry about the accents, I can, or asterisks. We can just ignore it. However, the next stitch also says 1F. So it could say 2F, one here and one here, but the asterisk is interrupting it. It's not a lot of chit chat. I'm not sure if you guys are finding this overly boring or repetitive or helpful. Um, it definitely is taking me longer than I expected because of those mistakes I made at the beginning and everything. So we will definitely not finish this square. However, I'm just going to keep going until I get as far as I can. If you have questions, I can repeat something. I can grab different yarn and show you something if you need. Let me know. Right now, we're going to keep continuing with row six. We did one stitch and then the asterisk. So here's the first one that's inside the asterisk repeating section. Then it has one back, one front, one back. Now, sometimes I can hold like two or three stitches in my head. I don't have to look at the paper. Sometimes I have to look for every single stitch. That also takes me a long time. The patterns themselves aren't overly complicated. It's the counting and the looking back at the pattern for every stitch that takes a long time, right? Then it says six in the front. So that's all these ones here. You still need to count them. I know it seems like you should just be able to go, 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 but it really is important, especially if you're having troubles. People tell me they can't get it, they can't figure it out, and then I find out that they aren't even counting. I'm like, well, come on, I can't crochet it for you. You have to count. So, that's three. That's four. If you forget, you just look back. We're counting the stitches, the double crochets. This one's behind, so we know this is one, two, three, four in front. We need to get to six. Chain space always between all of your double crochets. Always when we're doing a front stitch, it means that 
the yellow, well in this case for us yellow, has to be behind. We're not going to yarn over around that yellow. We got to keep him out of the way. I'll just unravel this again some more. We've reached the asterisk. The stitch outside of the asterisk is also one in the front. So if we were counting, it could say seven, but the asterisks are telling you how to make it wider to repeat it. So you could have a piece that's larger. That's why. And our end stitch is going in that final window space. You can find the second chain if you prefer, but I just use the window. Well, at least it's helpful for one person. Thank you, Rosalind. Rosalind? Rosalind. I guess you can't really tell me. I mean, you could type it in a special way. I don't know. Now, we're going to work on our accent color. We don't have to flip it because it's just here waiting for us. <coughs> I'm sorry, my throat has been weird. So, we're on row seven. We're using our accent color. The first thing it says is chain three in front. If you had that in the wrong spot, you would just be in you just be in the back and there's nothing you can do except for taking it apart. So the in front is just to remind you, it's like a double check. Did you get those tails in the right place? Yes. Then we're going to put the asterisk happens right away. So you'll notice because of the inner layer of mesh, the yellow layer of mesh, because it's shorter, it's one square smaller, and then all the squares are poked in together. The gray one, the asterisk has an end stitch on the side plus one stitch that's like a outside edge stitch. I don't know what to call them. The asterisk would be here. On the yellow one, depending on which side you're looking at, it'll either have a chain three and then the asterisk right away, or it'll have an end stitch and the asterisk is right beside it. And then on the other side, when you get to the end or when you're starting, it'll have a chain three plus a stitch before the asterisk. So depending on which way you're flipping it, that's why it matters. If you're reading this pattern, I have this little line here. It says visually completed one repeat because technically row 50 is starting at the beginning again. However, your work is now opposite. So if you're reading from the chart, you probably wouldn't notice that if you have one repeat of the chart. If you know how to read them, you wouldn't even notice. But when you're actually reading the written instructions, you have to keep going because it's not quite the same written instruction, if that makes sense. I might have just confused you all with that extra information. Um, how about we just crochet? Okay, okay. stop babbling, Ashley, focus. The first stitch on row seven, we've got chain three in front, then we have one in the back. So we yarn over and we want to be behind the gray, but not going through the gray. The whole double crochet is going to be behind the gray. So that's, this double crochet is behind this gray. Then it has one in the front. Yarn over. To get this stitch, we're going to be in front here. But when we insert our hook into the yellow, he's kind of behind already. So we have to make sure that he is in front before we do our yarn over and finish the double crochet. Chain space because we always have a chain between the double crochets. Two in the back. So we're going to grab that one and bring it all to the back so that when we do our double crochet we haven't yarned over around that gray at all. We're getting the gray out of the way and we're just doing this behind the gray. Then we have one in the front again. One in the back. One in the front again. You will notice as we continue that this line goes up, right? And this is making, it's going to make a line as well. So soon you'll have enough visual cues that you won't have to pay as much attention to the counts. 
but I still recommend counting every single stitch simply because I do. I count every single stitch. Then um, if you ever get lost and you're like, oh no, I don't know where I am. I don't know why so many people send me pictures. And they say, I don't know where I am. And I look at it and I go, well, all you have to do is count. But they just don't know. So I'll help you right here. We're on row seven. If you don't remember, you count here. This is the bottom window counts as two. The next window is four, six. So using your main color, two, four, six. If this was a main color row, it'd be eight. It's not, so we're not going up by two again. So this is only seven. Okay, so we're on row seven. The first stitch is our chain three. The chain three was in front. Then we had one in the back. It's hiding back there. One in the front, two in the back, one in the front, one in the back, one in the front. So now we still need to go two in the back, one in the front, one in the back, and an end stitch on the front. So we, we're going to go behind the gray. We can either pull it down out of the way, get your hook in there. We're still entering the stitch just like normal. We just happen to be working behind this gray layer of mesh. Two of those stitches in the back, one in the front. So now we need to keep the yellow one in the front. So I'm entering the yellow, but I'm making sure everything is still in the front before I grab my yarn. If you're paying attention to the asterisks and the repeats, now's your chance to put the marker. We're just gonna keep going because we're not repeating. The next stitch is behind the gray, so we go ahead. And the final stitch, the end stitch, is in front. So here's our final window. If you wanted to, you could find the second chain to go into. I just go into the whole window. The double crochet on the end this final stitch is in front of that gray. Now we're going to move the stitch marker because I don't want my yarn to get yanked and come apart. We're going to start with chain three. Now you'll notice every main color row, it doesn't say chain three in front or back because it's not in front or back, it's on the side. There, there's no yellow over here for it to be in front or behind of. Gray, yellow, right? So that helps you know this is a main color row. All of the even numbers are main color rows and I'm using gray for my main color. This one says chain three, then it says one in the front. You'll wanna make sure if you've forgotten because this is now we're here, main color. You have to look at the blue. Maybe it's not in blue, maybe you put it in black, white. The WS, wrong side or right side? RS, right side. The accent color back or accent color front. It's before every section. So every time you turn your work, you're starting a new section and you have to pay attention to those accent color tails. So we're on eight. We're using our main color. The accent color tails are to the back. You can also think of it as if you pay attention that this is the wrong side with all of these spikes at the bottom and this is the right side. The lines at the bottom are straight. We'll have gray and then the yellow. It's always going to be yellow next. So this has to stay with its friends here. That is why when we flip it he's still going to stay back here because he wants to make the line on this side. It needs to be visible. So you can think of it both ways. Technically, when we're looking at our work right now, this accent color tail is being pushed away from us. It is in the back. Oops, don't lose that. Chain three, first stitch goes one in the back. So make sure you're not going into this. I have tried to crochet in there before. Don't do that. <laughs> make sure it's, it's there, it's out of the way, but it's in the back. The next stitch is right here and it has to be behind the yellow. So this is the stitch we're going to be working with. We're behind the yellow and we do our double crochet. Then we chain one, 
and the asterisks have interrupted again. It could say six in the back, but it really says one in the back, asterisk five. So we're going to have a total of six in the back here, which just means we need five more. So we've got one in the back here. That's the asterisk part. So one in the back, then we have five more. This is one. This is two. Oh, we've got a comment. Let me read the comment. It says, I will use that counting tip to find my place in a huge blanket I finished and never noticed a huge mistake I made. Oh no, that's the worst. I ripped it all back ages ago, but I've been avoiding trying to figure it out. That's exactly how you do it. You have to count your main color windows by two, two, four, six. If your pattern is written like mine, to double check, um, I guess to double check, you would just make sure that you're, when the other person, I don't know if it's my pattern, if it's not my pattern, they might have written it differently. See if they have counted this bottom row as zero or one, and then see if they've counted the bottom row of yellow as zero or one. So it only works if this is row zero and the bottom is row one, yellow, zero and one. If you have someone else's pattern, I think some of them, they count these both as zero and other patterns I've seen where they count them both as one, like 1A, one 1B. One so the counting won't necessarily help you in that case. So you have to figure out what are these bottom ones and then you can count the windows to get to whatever number you're at. So uh, whenever we put down our work, I always double check where I am. Well, this was the unstitch, this was the one, the asterisk went here, one, two, three, we need five. So we're gonna keep going. four and five. This is fun, this chunky yarn. <laughs> like, uh, I should show you. Now the, the project I'm working on over here is mosaic, but look at my teeny tiny hook <laughs> in comparison. And look at my yarn. That's not even yarn, it's like thread. So this is what I've been working on, and it definitely feels different than using this big squishy yarn. <laughs> Way different. It's pretty fun. Might try using squishy yarn more often. So we did one, two, three, four, five, six, which is five plus the one that was outside of the asterisk. Now we have to do one in the front. And you can see this is kind of making like a U with a little pokey thing. So this is the one we're gonna go into the front. Make sure everything is at the front before we do our yarn over. It was a David Orth pattern. Yeah, I can't remember how he starts his, but um, definitely check it with the pattern and see how he starts the bottom ones. And, and he could always clarify for you probably. He could tell you if the bottom row counts as zero or one, but then at least you could figure out where you are. <laughs> he, I, I like his patterns a lot actually. And he, I'm pretty sure he does this similar uh, grouping. So where you have like a main color accent color and then the next grouping, I think so. But I guess I, I'm not entirely sure if he's changed it or if that was a long time ago. You don't think I, she's never messed up. Oh, I shouldn't say she, I have no idea if you're a she. Um, this person, Gisa Bunny, don't think I've ever messed up any of your patterns with a great big heart. Well, that's because my patterns are just oh so perfect, as you can tell. Did you miss the beginning of this live? Totally messed everything up. I mess up all the time. <laughs> but I'm glad that you like my patterns. That's what I'm going to take that as a compliment, that she likes my patterns. He, she, I don't know, sorry. So used to just saying words, you know. Uh, where am I? We're going to crochet five, one in the front. Oh, then the next says three in the back. So we're going to go in the back here. We're behind the yellow, but we're going into the front of the stitch just like normal. Stitch one double crochet, chain one between them, two double crochet, chain one between them, and three. Chain one between them. Now you can sort of see that we did this kind of bump it's going to be the same over here. 
So this one in the front, go in and bring it in the front. Yes, she, oh, so Gisa Bunny is she, and she did miss the beginning of the video where I totally messed everything up. That's okay, don't go back and rewatch it. Nobody needs to see that. <laughs> I just messed up my pattern. So this is the pattern. Well, it's not the whole pattern. I didn't even print off the first page. It's Goldilocks, but it's the repeatable Goldilocks. So I haven't updated it on Ravelry yet. I was in the process and then I thought, hey, I have time to do a live, I'll just do this one. And I thought it was ready. So I printed it off and I started crocheting. And down here in the foundation rows before I publish it to Ravelry, I'll have to update that because I had the wrong counts. So I started crochet and then I had everything wrong. But um, technically it's not been published. It's just live, showing everyone live how cuckoo I am. Oh, I don't need that in the way. I need to see my pattern. Here we go. Now I could just put it here. That will help me remember what row I'm on. I think I'm on row eight. I did three in the back, one in the front. Then I have to do one in the back and an end stitch. My toes are cold. I am sitting right next to this window. It is May and we had snow yesterday. It didn't last, like nothing is on the ground. The ground is still green, but gosh, so cold and the wind is crazy. You could probably hear the wind, I'm not sure. My house, this windows, they all suck. Oh, his windows are counting at the same. That is good. Rosalind says that the windows, um, the count for his patterns starts the same like mine. So you can do that trick to figure out which row you're on. See if you trust Rosalind or not. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Rosalind doesn't know. But um, I'm pretty sure, I've seen your name all over the place. I'm pretty sure you do know what you're talking about. So we're ready to switch. We're now on round nine. We're doing the accent color. It says chain three in back. The in back is just to double check that you're in the right place because right now, it's already too late. You don't get to decide if you're going to be in the back or in the front. That was already decided earlier, right? The first stitch is one in the back. So I'm going in the window, grabbing my yellow, but I'm pulling everything to the back before I do my yarn over. So now the stitch is behind. The asterisk has interrupted. The next stitch is also one in the back. You know, when I first started, I had really only done, I had started on someone else's project and then I pulled it all apart because it was a really big project and I didn't feel like finishing it. So technically, other than my own designs, I've only ever done one other project of interlocking crochet and it was a David Orth. He is, he has a special place for me because I did his pattern. I did the coffee one. Um, it says relax on it. Oh, doctor's orders. That's what it was called. Doctor's orders. And it has a big ball of yarn and it says relax and it has a coffee cup or a teacup or something. And it's like his mom's cup. You can see the floral design in an actual photo. She has it somewhere and that's definitely her cup. And I did the whole blanket, but I used um, a thin yarn, like a, I don't know if it was fingering weight. It might've been sport. So the blanket is kind of small and I was still finishing that blanket when I had started publishing my own. So I probably did learn how to count the windows from his patterns. I probably did copy that off of him. Uh, back to my pattern here, we're going to do two in the front. One and two. Now, the other thing I've been doing on my YouTube channel, maybe you know, I've been adding subtitles to everything. All of these like 130 languages and it's time consuming, but not that hard. You just like click the button and it says auto translate and you say yes. And then you auto translate yes. And you choose a bunch of languages and you add them. So it takes me, if my internet is good, it takes me like 25 minutes for one video to add all the languages. There was a couple days where our internet was very spotty. We live out in the middle of nowhere, Saskatchewan, Canada, and um, the wind can affect the internet. Rain can affect the internet. Snow, obviously. <laughs> Anything can affect the internet. So it took me an hour and a half that day, and I really wanted to get one more video done. So I wasted an hour and a half trying to get one video done. And then I said, okay, I guess I'm not adding any more subtitles today because it's just not working. You know what's funny? 
on my screen. That's so weird. When I look at my phone, so I have it in this little holder. When I look down, it doesn't show the same as what's on my computer. There's like a gap here. The phone ends here. I don't see anything past this. But on the computer, there's still all this extra space it's showing. So it's a good thing I wore a shirt that covers me. Goodness gracious, that's a good thing to know. Let's just crochet. I get distracted. My kids are gone. It's quiet. There's no distractions from them. So I have to distract myself just to keep up appearances, you know? <laughs> uh, we did. Chain three in the back, one back, one back, two front. Now we're going to two back. So that's one. This is two. And then four in the front. So we go in, make sure you bring everything to the front before we do our yarn over. Because you, if you did a yarn over like this, it would be going around. Let me just show you that since we're doing it. So this is the normal one. This is a mistake stitch. And on this side, it looks right. You can't tell. But when you turn it over, this is no longer in the back, right? It's gone around this stitch. That's how you know that's a mistake. So that just means that when you did your yarn over, you didn't have everything on the right side first. So when you're doing a front stitch, make sure you go into that, but you keep everything to the front before you do your yarn over. That's two, three, and four. I think you can hear my heater just kicked in because that's how cold it is. We also live in a trailer, like a mobile home. It's from the 70s. It's quite old. So the windows need upgrading and it's chilly outside so my heater definitely does turn on and it's also loud then we have one in the back and the end stitch is also in the back so you can see if you pull on this to make it square corner this is the final window and we're going to be behind it yarn over go right in there Da -da -da. Now we can flip it. So we still have gray on the outsides, gray on the bottom. These are the front because the lines are straight. And you're starting to see a design sort of pop up. Because this is chunky yarn, you can really see through all the windows, which is technically why I prefer to use a thinner yarn because then the windows are smaller and it makes the mesh look less meshy, if that makes sense. Ooh, I didn't notice the giggle. Rosalind giggled. She says, ha ha ha, but mm, I don't know what the last funny thing I said was. <laughs> Everything I say is funny, obviously. I'm a laugh. I should be a comedian. That's how I'll make my riches. Actually, I was following some Instagram channels and they're very popular. They have like 1 million followers and they just have all these stupid funny things. And I'm like, how did you get a million followers? I just don't get it. They're like, they do a 30 second video of their face and then they put words on it that say my face when dad comes home without chocolate. That's it. That's the whole video. That's the whole joke. And they get like 600,000 likes and subscribes and crap. And I'm out here doing videos and drawing patterns and teaching patterns. And people are like, yeah, not important. I don't get it. Anyway, enough whining lady. This would be less me whining if you guys were here talking to me. So that when I had a drink, you could tell your stories, right? Water, by the way. I don't actually drink. I've seen a lot of those sip and chats where they have drink drinks, which is very fun for, I'm sure, lots of people. I can't drink. I've, I've been on prescription medications for basically my whole life. I'm not on any right now, but... Um, I still have absolutely no alcohol tolerance. I sometimes will take a sip of my husband's drink because they smell good and instantly my face is flushed and I get hot and bothered. So I just can't drink anything fancy. Just water for me. I mean, I like juice and stuff too, but then it's a lot of sugar, so I don't usually bother. Um, little fuzz on my yarn. Okay, so should I keep going? You guys are still good. I've been live for over an hour. And I definitely thought I'd be farther than this, but I guess I talked too much. Plus, I wasted time at the beginning with my count being wrong. 
I can show you some other things if you like, or I can say no more. The world has gone mad. Crochet keeps, keeps me sane ish. Gisa Bunny, I'm the same. Crochet is how I keep saying heavy on the ish. <laughs> I don't think I'm really that sane sometimes. But crochet is definitely my sanity, therapy, everything. Um, I can just like talk with my face if you like, but I could tell you stories. I could crochet. I don't know. I get distracted easily. I started crocheting that doctor's blanket, um, doctor's orders blanket by David. I started crocheting to to keep my sanity. I mean, I knew how to crochet as a kid, but I had put it all away because I was in university and then I had kids and stuff and you just sort of don't bother with that. And I brought it out because I was going crazy and I needed to find myself and entertain my brain. I had uh, my son at that time. I have, I have three kids right now. Hopefully that'll be enough. Um, so Alice is seven, Remington's five, and Melody is two. And when I had Remington, it was a traumatic birth. And he, I think he was about 18 months old when I brought my crocheting out again. And I was like, I need to, I need to find me. Who am I? I don't even know anymore, right? So it has morphed now into my job, which is kind of crazy. And it still keeps me sane, ish, <laughs> heavy on the ish. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know how people don't crochet. Crochet is so important to me. But I guess, like, my sister-in-law, she does a lot of running and exercise. And I'm sure that would be better on my body. Um, but crochet is what I do to keep my brain occupied. So that's the way we go. I guess I'm going to keep crocheting here for a few more minutes. I don't know. There seems to be people watching me and there's people talking to me. And I thought I would get farther than this on the pattern. So I think I'll just keep going. We're on row 10. We did one in the front. Well, did chain three and then one in the front. And now we're going to do one in the back. And then three in the front again. Sometime I really do hope someday that I can be organized enough to plan this sort of a live chatty crochet thing instead of just having like an hour's notice saying, hey guys, dad's taking the kids away and I'm going to be on the video because I know probably I'd get more people attending if they knew I was going to do it. But I just can't be that organized in this stage of my life. So this is what we got. Now, the next stitch is here all in the front. I think, hopefully, despite all of my mistakes at the beginning, that maybe someone can watch this video at some point and say, yes, this was helpful, and they don't necessarily have to watch to the end to hear all my babble, although they might, because then they'll just see the stitches with this nice chunky yarn and then they'll know what to do. Oops, except for I did split my yarn there. There we go. And I have lots of tutorial videos and other walkthroughs. So I'm hoping that that means more people can crochet because I think crochet keeps more than just me and Goosa Bunny, Gisa Bunny, sane-ish. <laughs> I think um, a lot of people took up crocheting in the last few years because we're all trying to find a little bit of calm in our brains, a little bit of me time, a little bit of creativity slash creating something, right? This is a time spent keeping our hands busy, keeping our brains counting. There's actual research showing that like crochet and knitting and such, it does help your brain with things like Alzheimer's, just keeping your active brain and such. So I just want to be able to make these videos so that people can join in with me. And if I had thought more like a business, 
I would have made sure that this was updated on Ravelry. Then you could buy the pattern and crochet with me. That makes more sense from a business perspective. Buy the pattern. I didn't think of that because I was just thinking, hey, I want to show you the pattern. So, you know, I have a lot left to learn. I uh, don't have like a business degree and I have a psychology degree. So, you know, the things that we do and we learn and uh, maybe next time I'll do better. That's pretty much all I can say, right? So we're on row 11. We did chain three in front. Now we're going to do one in the back. And one in the front. And two in the back. So we got to go behind the gray. Then it goes front, back, front. So you can see the design is starting to show up. If you had the chart in front of you, you would know what to expect for the next parts. I pretty much never use the chart. I draw the chart, I get the written instructions from the chart, and then I never look at the chart again. Uh, if I think I've made a mistake, sometimes I'll go back to the chart just to double check. But basically, I can't, well I mean you could, but I don't design by crocheting. I design by drawing on the paper. And then in order to get the written instructions to crochet, I use the chart. But other than that, the chart is no good to me. I can't follow the chart. I have to use the written instructions so sometimes I forget that some people really like to use the charts and I do have other tutorials, but um, I guess I'll have to do a newer tutorial on using the chart because I think my other tutorials are old and some of those old tutorials, now that I was putting those subtitles on, I've been looking at the old ones and I'm like, whoa, those are bad. But then here I am making this one and to be honest, this tutorial is not that great either because of my babble and my mistakes and whatever. So. I guess it's just more to learn. Another comment. I'm sure it will be helpful for future people. I hardly ever catch lives in real time, but still enjoy them afterwards. Thanks for dedicating your time to it. Thank you, Kisa Bunny. That's kind of what I was thinking, too. I personally, I don't watch YouTube in general, let alone lives. I have too many other things going on in my life. You don't tell me when to watch the YouTube. I'll decide when I'm watching the YouTube, right? <laughs> so lives doesn't mean much to me. But according to... Um, I don't know, I read some things every now and then. I'm trying to do lives because it, it like notifies people and you might get more watch hours. That's kind of the dealio. So I was like, well, I guess I'll try a live. Plus it means that I did all this crocheting and it's already on there and I don't have to now spend three hours editing it. Although for this one, that would have been really handy because I would have edited out all my mistakes and nobody would ever know. They would just see me being perfect and that would be way better for my ego if everyone could just believe I was perfect. So, you know, pros and cons, <laughs> I'm not perfect, but before I get this one up on Ravelry, I will make sure that it has the right counts on there. And of course it has interlocking and mosaic. So I have to double check the mosaic one as well. The mosaic one, I do have a sample here. This is what it's kind of looking like. You can see it's, it's because my chunky yarn makes it much larger. So the mosaic is all solid inside. And these ones have the windows because it's interlocking crochet. And this, um, this sample here isn't really the width or the height of the pattern at all. It was just a random sample when I was designing that one. So I don't know if I'm going to crochet it again or what, but I'll definitely make sure I get the counts right for all those repeats. Oh, and some people like to know this is the back. Mosaic crochet just does stripes, but you can see that sometimes you get these little tiny flaps. So that's where you've either done the front front loop, drop down front loop, or the back loop single crochet. So I don't know, this little design, you can make it big or small, whatever you like. And um, yeah, you can see this design is sort of starting to come. I think an hour and a half live is probably enough. I should probably just go work on the pattern now and I will update it for you. And then you can buy it, although I don't, um, I don't know if I'll get that finished today. 
So that, um, yeah, I guess I should finish the row because then I, I don't even know where I am now. Maybe I shouldn't finish the row. Two, four, six, eight, ten. We're on row eleven. Right here. Front, back, front, two back, front, back, front, two back, front. Then it's, oh, we're outside. It says one back and the end stitch in the front. That's easy. Let's just finish that up so I don't forget where I am. I do hope that I at least entertained you all. And I am trying to get my watch hours up on YouTube to be a monetized channel, which means like they decide they can show you ads whenever they like. But if you're part of the monetization program, then they pay you some of the money because they get to make the money anyways, right? So I have enough subscribers to my channel, but I don't have enough watch hours. And I've been adding all those YouTube subtitles with all the different languages. And that has been helping increase my watch hours because now my audience is larger. But I'm still not monetized. I'm still working towards it. So that's kind of my goal for the next, I don't know, little while. I'm hoping it won't take too long. So I'm really close to getting monetization. And then I can make like a dollar. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm pretty sure they don't give you much. But... Um, I'm sure someday I could be famous and have like 3 million followers and then I'll make all the money and I'll never have to work again. <laughs> I don't know. Rosalind says it's nice to know how to fix our mistakes and that is definitely a good point. I think that is pretty much what separates an amateur from a professional. The professional isn't not making mistakes. They just know how to fix them. So sometimes that means you know when to ignore a mistake and fix it later and when to pull things apart and actually just fix it right now. Sometimes that means that you can catch the mistakes sooner and you don't have to waste as much time because you have more experience. And sometimes that means like knowing what is a mistake. Some people, they send me pictures and they go, I don't know where I made a mistake. And I look at it and I go, whoa, <laughs> uh, everywhere, right? You're gonna run some videos and clock up some extra hours for me? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that'd be great. I have heard that you have to have it not muted which is funny because in a couple of my videos I say hey go ahead and mute me and then I learned that apparently that doesn't count as watch hours which I'm like well that doesn't make any sense so yeah I guess there's things like um I have to update some of my little thumbnails because that'll make more people click on me and YouTube will show me in the algorithms if people watch the videos which tells YouTube they like my videos when people click on it and they watch 10 seconds and they click away, it tells YouTube, we don't like these videos. And then YouTube doesn't suggest them anymore. So I'm trying to, I can't, I'm not re-uploading my videos, obviously. I'm just going to leave them. But going forward, I'm going to try and make my videos better. Sound on. Thanks. That's super great. Um, yeah. So I think I'm done crocheting. Well, I'm not done crocheting, but I'm done crocheting on the live. I will keep working on this and I'll make a pretty picture and then I'll keep working on this and I'll add that picture to the pattern and I'll make sure the counts are right and I'm also going to add brackets. I'm not sure if you can tell in here. We didn't go over it too much but for example here where it says 1F, 1B, 1F, 1B, you can put brackets here and it would say 1F, 1B, bracket times 2. So that will be in this pattern and I have an entire page that tells you how to read brackets. And I refer people to that page quite often because it's something that people seem not to know how to do, which did surprise me. But um, just, you know, more skills under the belt that people have to do. And um, yeah, that's all for me, I guess. I could switch this and you could see my face. Is that me? Did it work? No, it didn't work. Let's try again. There. Oh, that's not me yet, but hi guys, it's me. It's been fun. We crocheted this much and I thought we were going to get to here. So, um, I guess I am delusional. That's really what I'm telling you. <gasps> I'm sideways. Hmm. If I turn it this way, am I upside down? It's a delay. Now I'm, oh, it's fixed. Okay, good. Anyway, yeah, you can tell them technology. I learned a lot these last two years because um, I don't think I'm that old. <laughs> and I used to be way better at technology. My teenage years, 
I guess I just had more spare time to figure this sort of things out. And now I spend all my time dealing with kids or just crocheting. And I don't really like figuring out all the technology stuff. I'd rather someone else do it, but I, nobody's here doing it for me. So I don't think I have anything else to tell you except for that I appreciate all the people who are watching, either live or not live. And I appreciate the comments and the love. And I love it when people tell me my patterns are amazing. This whole pattern journey has been pretty good for my ego. <laughs> um, people like my art. That's basically what it feels like. And people tell me I'm good at teaching the skills or I'm good at this or I'm good at that. And that feels great. I love that. Um, I'm not sure who wouldn't love that, right? And I know there's a lot of things I still need to work on. So I am working on them, I promise. And our personal life has been a little crazy. I mean, we moved three times in the last two years. And I have three little kids, which is, I mean, that should be enough, right? I have three little kids, they're here all the time. We homeschool, so there's no, I don't send them away. And my husband right now is home like all the time with us. Well, not all the time, but it feels like almost all the time. So our life is, we are working towards the life that we want. We want to be able to have a garden, which snowed yesterday, so the garden not doing so well. But, um, you know, we're working on those types of things. And that means I'm learning more outside as well as inside with all my crochet stuff. And I just did this in the round. That was new for me. And I feel like, why didn't I start learning that sooner? I don't know, but do you think it's pretty? That's basically, I just do that all the time. Do you think it's pretty? So my son told me he likes this one. I think he likes the colors. And it's a little bit um, greeny bluey and he likes the ocean. So he might claim this one, we'll see. I, I made like a sea turtle for my ocean loving son and he was like, yeah, that's cool. No, nothing. I try to impress my kids. I try to impress my family. I don't know. I'm going to go back to working on my computer and not crocheting for at least an hour. And then maybe I'll crochet again. And um, if I'm feeling brave, I will do another live video on Facebook or Instagram because my kids aren't home making noises. So now's the time where I can do a live. And it helps me get my like engagement statistics and s weird things like that because that's how I get seen more. I don't really know. That's the part I'm still learning. So I can make all these beautiful patterns, but if nobody sees them, then it's kind of useless. So I have to work on also getting seen, which is weird. But yeah, thank you for all the compliments and the love. And uh, I hope that it helps now and in the future. I mean, it's going to be in there forever. Maybe in five years, someone will be like, that's the exact help I needed, right? And uh, I think I have to make the camera all wonky to turn it off. So bye, guys. Let's see. There it is. Oops, no, press something. Well, now you can watch me. Huh. Are you sure you want to stop? Yes.